Hello, welcome to this video on geometry of numbers. Uh, this video is uh, uh, is mainly on uh, the Minkowski's theorem, the, uh, which is uh, more correctly uh, the general form of Minkowski's theorem, uh, which is taken from uh, the chapter nine of uh, the uh, the textbook written by C. D. Olds named Geometry of Numbers. This theorem is uh, the uh, is the is the theorem numbered 9.4 in the ninth chapter of the text. The theorem states that if M is a bounded and symmetrical uh, set with an area greater than four, a bounded and symmetrical set with an area greater than four, then uh, it contains at least one and largest point other than the origin can repeat if m is a bounded bounded symmetrical set with uh, an area greater than 4 then it it can contain then it contains at least one lattice point other than the origin to prove this uh, we have to take uh, a bounded symmetrical uh, set a bounded and symmetrical set uh, about the point the origin about origin we take uh, such a set and you can see in the figure in this figure uh, this uh, red red colored uh, line crossed cl uh, crossed region is the set uh, it is taken as the uh, as an example uh, for the set m uh, it is bounded and also uh, it is symmetrical about it's assumed that it is symmetrical about the origin origin uh, is this point and it's what is its area its area is uh, uh, it's greater than 4 having area greater than 4 uh, okay then uh, you know uh, we try to shrink this uh, uh, this bounded set this bounded and symmetrical set we, we shrink this bounded and symmetrical set by keeping the symmetry without affecting the symmetry we shrink it so that uh, we get uh, the area uh, so that the area of the shrink region uh, is 1 plus epsilon where epsilon is a very small quantity its value will be value of the epsilon will be uh, desired later depending upon uh, uh, a sequential developed uh, ideas we will uh, desire later depending upon some ideas uh, that will be uh, described uh, after some time uh, uh, that that uh, condition will be given but now this much you should remember that the area of uh, the shrink region the you can see that uh, uh, shrink region uh, here they uh, as the as the inner uh, symmetrical uh, set and this is m dash uh, that that region is m dash here uh, in this figure uh, the original set uh, is named m and uh, the shrinked symmetrical uh, set is named uh, m dash what is the area of this uh, uh, set it is 1 plus epsilon area of uh, the outer uh, the red colored uh, symmetrical set is uh, greater than 4 ok and we uh, shrink it uh, very sim uh, symmetric by keeping the symmetry without affecting the symmetry ok so it is uh, symmetrical about uh, the new uh, new set is also symmetrical about uh, the origin okay next uh, you know uh, we can now transfer we next we try we, we try to tran uh, transfer we translate transfer this uh, set the inner set to uh, a suitable position in the plane uh, applying the applying the the theorem by applying uh, the theorem 9.1 the previous theorem uh, in the chapter 9.1 uh, we try to transfer uh, this set or we uh, we translate this set on the plane uh, to a new position so that uh, so that it contains uh, at least uh, two uh, lattice points so that uh, the theorem states that the theorem 9.1 states that if the area of a uh, set on the plane uh, uh, if it is uh, greater than one then it must contain it can contain at least two lattice points if it is uh, transferred to a suitable position 
only when it is transferred to a suitable position then it can contain at least two lattice points so we uh, do translate we translate this inner symmetrical set to a position you can see that that translated one is also uh, uh, given the same name m dash uh, the set the translated uh, new set new set uh, which is translated uh, will be named m dash will be called the uh, will be called the same um, uh, called by the same name but we will add that uh, or add the word that translated i am a translated m dash so it is correctly uh, it, it will be called uh, translated m dash uh, so this is original m dash and then this is translated m dash now our uh, further discussion it will be called that uh, set uh, the new set will be called a translated m dash and uh, uh, what is the property what is another property a property that's that translated m dash uh, possess the property that it possess the property that uh, uh, it contains uh, two lattice points how do we get that property it is uh, obtained that property is obtained or uh, uh, um, we obtain that lattice point uh, applying uh, theorem 9.1 okay then uh, we okay and another uh, uh, the, the same situation this transferred one here since uh, this uh, uh, this figure uh, the new figure uh, is small compared to uh, 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 by keeping the symmetry and also uh, the size uh, everything by keeping that you know uh, since uh, compared to the original uh, sets uh, it cannot be uh, uh, made large so uh, we need to draw uh, a new figure and that new figure uh, represents the translated the translator sets and the uh, uh, and and other sets uh, that uh, that follow the uh, this translation once this translation is done we make uh, uh, as we proceed uh, with the steps of the proof we uh, make new uh, uh, new sets new symmetrical sets and those sets uh, uh, are much bigger than uh, this translated set so uh, we need to draw a different figure and that figure you can see that figure here a bigger figure is drawn and in this figure you can see uh, the translated the translated m dash is the uh, the inner symmetrical set the inner set and we call the uh, point of symmetry of that uh, set by o dash O dash is the point of symmetry. Okay, the set is uh, symmetrical about that O dash. Next, uh, you can see, or also you can see uh, the points P1 and P2. These are the two lattice points that we uh, that we are clear uh, about uh, the existence of uh, uh, these two lattice points. We are clear about the existence of these lattice points because uh, we have translated that uh, uh, the set uh, M. Uh, we have translated the set m dash uh, so as to get uh, uh, the two lattice points and we take that uh, we mark those lattice points p1 and p2 after that we join uh, p1 and p2 by a line segment we join it by a line segment okay p1 p2 is the line segment and uh, then uh, We then draw a uh, um, a line. A straight line is drawn after that. After obtaining P1 and P2 and then joining P1 and P2, uh, what we do, and we draw a straight line, uh, which passes through a straight line, which is uh, which passes through the uh, point of symmetry O dash, the new point of symmetry O dash, and also uh, it is parallel to the line segment P1 and P2. P1, P2, the line segment P1, P2. So, what is the condition for drawing and the line? And that line will be called L dash. We will call the line, the newly drawn line uh, by L dash. And uh, that line is parallel to the line segment P1, P2. Uh, also, it, pass, it must pass through the origin O dash. Sorry, it is not the origin. Uh, origin is uh, actually the point of symmetry of the starting figure, the original set original set tm but here we have uh, we have this figure after translation so this is uh, o, o, o dash is not the origin it is the new 
point of uh, we can call that the new point of symmetry of the figure and you can see that uh, when we extend this uh, line uh, in this straight line uh, when we extend uh, the line l dash on both sides uh, to uh, to to both direction in both direction if we extend it you can see that since this is bounded since the set m dash is bounded uh, you can see that it uh, uh, crosses that uh, uh, the boundary of m dash at two places it can it, it must cross it, it must cross the line line must uh, touch the boundary and it must cross uh, at uh, two places uh, of the set m dash and we, we we take those two points as q1 dash and q2 dash we take them we name them q1 dash and q2 dash q1 dash q2 dash we name them uh, actually you cannot uh, uh, or q1 prime and q2 prime you can't see the prime uh, that uh, the dash here but it is there uh, we we will call this q1 dash uh, q1 q1 dash or q1 prime or q2 prime and those those points are these points are the point of intersection of the line l dash with uh, the boundary of uh, m dash and uh, uh, we we can see that we get now uh, a polygon actually uh, we get p1 p2 you can see that uh, we get uh, okay at the same time uh, we have to uh, uh, say one more thing at the same time addition in addition to this we can say that uh, uh, we we have to say that uh, you know uh, by joining p2 the point the first lattice point p2 uh, the uh, center of symmetry and then extending it to the, uh, to the uh, in the, uh, extending that line in the opposite direction you can uh, you, you get uh, a line a dotted line as you can see here you will get a dotted line and it goes in this direction and uh, if you measure the distance uh, from o dash to p1 and the same uh, distance can be measured in the opposite direction and uh, you get uh, a point which is just another point you get another point uh, p1 dash which is just uh, uh, opposite uh, which lies at the uh, which is present at the opposite direction uh, of uh, p1 and uh, we can say that this point is symmetrically opposite we can say that the point the new point is symmetrically opposite to the point p1 and we will name uh, that new point by p1 dash or p1 prime the new uh, the name of the point is name of the new point is p1 p1 prime and this is that point p1 prime okay the same thing you can apply in the case of uh, uh, the point p2 p2 also so you uh, you can join uh, p2 with uh, the center and uh, you can join p2 with the center and can be extended to uh, reach the point uh, p2 p2 prime thus we have two additional uh, points two more points we have two more points uh, which uh, lay uh, just uh, opposite symmetrically opposite uh, to the points which are the symmetric uh, symmetrically opposite points uh, of uh, the two lattice points p1 and p2 and uh, also uh, we can say that these two points the uh, the two new points p1 prime and p2 prime uh, will lay just uh, opposite to or on the other uh, side of uh, it it lies on the other side of uh, the line uh, l1 also uh, also you can say that uh, uh, since the line l1 passes through uh, passes through the center of symmetry then we can um, we can see from the symmetry from the symmetry of uh, from the symmetric property of the uh, set m dash uh, we can say that uh, the line l dash divides divides the uh, the entire set m dash the line l dash uh, divides the entire set m dash into two symmetrically into two symmetrically uh, uh, equal uh, subsets and those two subsets are the first subset is this one that you can uh, you, uh, you can look at the uh, look at the cursor uh, the boundary uh, or you can uh, look along the along the uh, line uh, where the cursor moves uh, and here also and that that gives us the first set and another set the second set is uh, uh, is determined by the boundary uh, along which the cursor moves
So these are the two sets. They are symmetrical, even though uh, it does not uh, uh, seem to be symmetric in the hand-drawn figure. Uh, it is a rough sketch because it's a rough sketch. Now, uh, considering these two sets and also the newly obtained points, now how many points we have? Yeah, we have uh, first uh, two points P1 and P2, they are lattice points uh, and uh, uh, symmetrically opposite uh, points uh, P1 prime and P2 prime, they are also, uh, it is clear that since uh, uh, they are symmetrically opposite and uh, also due to, uh, due to the symmetry of, uh, due to the whole symmetry of, uh, uh, due, due to the symmetry of the whole uh, set M dash, uh, we can say that uh, P1 prime and P2 prime are also uh, two points which uh, uh, lies in, uh, in and on, in uh, in and on, you know, in or on uh, the uh, set M dash. These two points are also, but clearly uh, Q1 and Q2 as uh, as we have defined. So as per the definition given, uh, Q1 and Q2 are the two points which lay just uh, on the on the boundary of uh, the set M dash. Q1 and Q2, uh, Q1, uh, Q1, Q1 prime and Q2 prime are the uh, Q1 prime and Q2 prime. Correct it. Q1 prime and Q2 prime uh, lay on the uh, boundary of uh, the set M dash, M prime. Okay. And thus, uh, here uh, you can see that uh, this can uh, make a parallelogram what can make the points p1 p2 p1 prime and p2 prime the points p1 p2 p1 prime and p2 prime uh, together the four points can make a parallelogram and that parallelogram you can see that uh, some of the uh, uh, sides are uh, dotted lines here in the figure and uh, that parallelogram uh, must lay uh, well, well uh, in the set in which set in the set M dash M prime, that parallelogram lies in the set M prime. Okay. Then uh, after after obtaining this, after obtaining all this, uh, next we are going to uh, we are going to uh, compare the uh, lengths of. Uh, we are going to compare the lengths. Uh, uh, what we can say, yeah, uh, the 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 lengths uh, 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 of the of the line segment Q1, Q2. We are going to compare the lengths of uh, the line segment Q1, uh, uh, Q1 prime and Q2 prime, Q1 prime, Q2 prime. So it's a mistake uh, that uh, dash is not uh, that that uh, that uh, um, quotation mark is not uh, there. Uh, that is missing there. Actually, there is quotation mark. So you should. Uh, um, think that it is there so q1 prime and q2 prime so uh, the line segment q1 prime q2 prime is the line segment starting from here uh, starting uh, and uh, in between uh, between and the line segment connecting q1 prime and q2 prime is the line segment will be length of the line segment is going to be uh, compared to the length of uh, p1 and p2 and we are going to say that it must always be greater than uh, the length of p1 p2 the length, the length of the line segment must always be greater than p1 p2 and that uh, argument will will follow will it will uh, uh, it will follow easily from uh, uh, from the fact that uh, from the fact that if uh, if the if the length of uh, q1 uh, q1 prime q2 prime if the length of the line segment q1 prime q2 prime if it by chance comes uh, less than less than uh, the length of uh, uh, p1 and p2 if the length of uh, q1 prime q2 prime uh, if the length of this line segment is less than uh, the length of uh, p1 and p2, uh, it, it it will uh, it will uh, affect the semi uh, it will affect the convexity uh, of uh, the set. Uh, it can affect the convexity of the set. Then the set may not become convex, and that is the problem. That is the problem. So we have to uh, we have to think that uh, we have to accept that uh, that uh, the line segment Q1 Q2 is uh, length of line segment Q1 Q1 dash Q1 dash Q2 dash is greater than uh, P1 and P2. Okay. And we are coming to that uh, point. And before that, uh, uh, some more. Uh, some more, po uh, some more, uh, uh, 
uh, things we have to say are ah, okay uh, one 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 thing is that uh, uh, we have to uh, we uh, we have to give the uh, we have to take the um, uh, the coordinate values of the points p1 and p2 here also assume that the point p1 has uh, the uh, has x coordinate p1 small p1 and uh, y coordinate uh, q1 and, uh, uh, and and also the point q2 uh, uh, and the q2 is uh, small p2 q2 q p2 capital p2 is a small p2 q2 and it is also uh, it is clear uh, it is clear that uh, p1 p q1 and p2 q2 all these are all these four values are integer values why because uh, because uh, our um, uh, according to our um, our uh, application of uh, theorem 9.1 we got uh, uh, the points uh, p1 and p2 as uh, lattice points and since p1 and p2 are lattice points we know that uh, their coordinates must be some integers must be only integers yeah the coordinates are only integers so due to it is the reason for that next uh, uh, what is the next okay and then the point once again uh, we, uh, let's uh, uh, let's this uh, let's go through the uh, not <coughs> not written here and the points uh, p1 uh, p1 prime p2 prime which uh, come symmetrically opposite to p1 and p2 and uh, p2 uh, and they are marked um, uh, p2 are, are are marked in uh, in the set m dash okay and they are uh, they are marked there and the line l dash is uh, drawn okay that also also uh, that, that point also described uh, okay and we uh, get uh, the quadrilateral okay then we now we get uh, co the quadrilateral you know the we get a quadrilateral p1 uh, p2 uh, q2 dash and uh, q1 uh, q, q2 prime and q1 prime uh, the quadrilateral let's uh, uh, look at the quadrilateral quadrilateral uh, the quadrilateral in later quadrilateral and lateral is uh, uh, the q1 uh, sorry p1 p2 this is that quad quadrilateral mm, uh, p1 p2 uh, q uh, p1 p2 and then uh, uh, q2 prime and q1 prime p1 p2 q2 prime and q1 prime is q1 prime is the quad quadrilateral quadrilateral okay and this is the the quadrilateral and uh, uh, we can think about uh, the think of the uh, slope of L dash. Uh, uh, you know, it is clear uh, slope of L dash is the slope of uh, uh, slope of uh, uh, the line segment P1 P2 because they are parallel. Uh, uh, P since P1 P2 and uh, the line L dash are parallel, so to obtain the slope of L dash, we can take the slope of uh, uh, P1 P2 and the slope of P1 P2 is. Uh, is but q2 minus q1 divided by p2 minus p1 q2 minus q1 divided by p2 minus p1 so that is uh, that becomes the uh, slope of uh, the uh, slope slope of the line l dash next we claim that uh, as uh, i have mentioned in um, in our uh, in the description in in the discussion uh, we have mentioned that uh, we can compare when we compare the uh, length of uh, q1 prime and q2 prime with uh, and the length of uh, p1 p2 it must be greater than or at least equal uh, it must be greater than or equal to p1 the length of p1 p2 and we we can prove that uh, prove this claim we know that uh, p1 uh, p2 uh, the p1 p2 q1 prime and q2 prime are all in the convex set m uh, m m dash they are all in the convex set m dash and the line uh, l dash uh, equally uh, divide uh, equally they divide uh, m1 uh, sorry m dash into two symmetric uh, sets the line l dash uh, equally divide the two uh, symmetric sets uh, uh, sorry um, the set m the set m dash the set m prime it divides l the l prime l prime equally divides l prime equally divides the set uh, m prime into two uh, symmetric sets and therefore uh, q1 prime and q2 prime uh, are or and also q1 prime and q2 prime are on the line on the line uh, or they are they are they are on the boundary of uh, m prime and the lines uh, yeah yeah they are all on the boundary of m prime suppose suppose uh, for the time being that uh, 
distance between q1 prime and q2 prime is less than the distance between p1 and p2 and what happens and we have to uh, draw it uh, that uh, that assumption uh, can be and we we just assume that and this is this is the case and then we then we can uh, draw then we have to draw uh, the figure uh, um, when when we draw only that uh, the points p1 p2 and the symmetrical uh, opposite uh, points p1 prime and p2 prime uh, along with that uh, mm, uh, that q1 prime and q2 prime which uh, the points uh, those two points which belong to the uh, boundary uh, of m prime and the center o dash uh, or o prime and thus, uh, thus here uh, you can see that uh, uh, these two points will be outside the outside uh, or since they are since the distance uh, uh, between the two points here also uh, they have the same distance so it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's greater than it's bigger than uh, compared to and uh, the inner uh, line segment so uh, also all these points belong to a convex set it is clear that it all this belongs to a convex set but q1 prime and q2 prime must belong to the out uh, uh, these are the points q1 prime and q2 prime uh, they belong to the boundary boundary of the set m prime and uh, hence it is clear that uh, the convexity of uh, the set uh, is undermined now so uh, it's uh, so we get a contradiction since the convexity is un, uh, is affected. So we get the contradiction. Therefore, um, the uh, magnitude of uh, Q1 of the line segment, the length of the line segment Q1 prime Q2 prime must be greater than uh, greater than uh, the length of the line segment P1 P2. So after knowing this, uh, uh, we proceed to uh, expand. And next, in the next step, uh, what uh, shall we do? And we we now expand m m m prime uh, to a new set m double prime. Next, we expand m prime to a new set m double prime. Uh, but this expansion is uh, also keeping uh, its symmetry without affecting its symmetry. Uh, proportionately, we expand. We, we expand uh, that means uh, every part of the uh, set uh, m prime must be exp must be uh, must got a point in the new set m double prime so as to keep the uh, symmetry uh, of the set and by by multiplying uh, it is uh, expanded proportionately and uh, uh, proportionately by multiplying uh, uh, the measurement but you know this expansion is done by multiplying the measurement uh, in all direction the measurement is uh, measurements are multiplied by two so we take uh, the uh, um, two times uh, two times of uh, two times all measurements uh, of the set m prime to get to the new set m double prime and then uh, uh, what happens then the area of uh, uh, what happens to how happens to the area of uh, m double prime you know when the measurements are uh, doubled you know the area of the new set will be then uh, will be then four times that of the uh, original area the original area of m prime is original area of m prime is one plus epsilon the origin the area of uh, uh, area of uh, m prime is one plus epsilon so when it is uh, expanded mm, uh, by multiplying all dimensions by two the area of the new set uh, thus becomes uh, four into one plus epsilon that is four plus four epsilon four plus four epsilon and uh, now uh, you know uh, in the new set we uh, let's refer that uh, the figure previous figure once again um, yeah this is the this is m dash m prime and uh, uh, that is going to be expanded to m double prime m double prime and then uh, what happens to the line l dash l dash it it can further be expanded it can be uh, exp expanded further to meet the uh, boundary of uh, m double prime so the line l dash will also be uh, expi will be extended line l dash is extended uh, on uh, to both directions and uh, hence uh, as a result the line meets uh, m double prime at the point q1 double prime and uh, q2 double prime so two two more points uh, we have 
two more points uh, which lay on the boundary of uh, M double prime and those points are uh, Q1 double prime and Q2 double prime. Okay. Clearly, Q1 double prime and Q2 double prime they are on the boundary of uh, M double prime, but uh, but but the points uh, but the points P1 double prime and P2 double double prime uh, lay on or inside the expanded set M, and we have to uh, uh, get an idea. We have to uh, yeah, we have to get an idea about uh, uh, the uh, points. Uh, the the corresponding points of uh, uh, points of p1 uh, p1 and p2 uh, the corresponding points of p1 and p2 in the new set so for that once again we go back to the figure and here you know uh, these the two lattice points p1 and p2 uh, which are present in which are present in m dash uh, uh, should uh, should also be then trans uh, uh, yeah, transferred to or uh, translated to that point will be uh, will be uh, translated to a point p1 will be translated to the point p1 double prime uh, uh, so that this distance equal to the uh, the distance from o dash to o no, from o prime to p1 will be equal to distance from p1 to p double prime it will naturally happen uh, like uh, like that it will happen so this distance is equal to this distance thus we have p1 double prime mm, the new point uh, p1 double prime and p1 prime p1 and p1 double prime uh, and p1 double prime is the, is the point corresponding to the point p1 uh, corresponding to the point p1 and this p1 double prime is um, uh, is the is the number uh, sorry is the point belonging to m double prime p1 double prime is the point uh, belonging to m double prime belonging to the new expanded set uh, m double prime but that is the corresponding point of p1 similarly we get uh, the corresponding point of p2 uh, p2 that is p2 double prime we get the corresponding point of p2 p2 double prime we uh, by uh, taking the by considering this line uh, the the line uh, on which p2 is present you can further uh, move along that line to obtain the uh, point p2 double prime uh, considering the length length from uh, length of the line segment from o prime to p2 the same length if you measure the same length uh, 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 length uh, along the same line if you measure the same length along the same line you get a point and that at that point you can uh, give a name p2 double prime thus we have we have obtained two uh, corresponding points p1 double prime and p2 double prime which uh, which are the corresponding points of p1 and p2 And these two points lay uh, inside M double prime. And we also have, we also have Q1, um, uh, the length of uh, Q1 prime and Q2 prime is greater than uh, P1, uh, P2, uh, length of uh, uh, P1 and uh, length of, uh, length between them. This is P1. So this is a repetition and uh, um, this is the length between, uh, sorry, length of uh, P uh, Q1 prime, Q2 prime. Here, um, that prime is missing. So length of uh, uh, length of the line segment Q1 prime, Q2 prime is greater than uh, uh, length of P1, P2. This, this thing we have already proved. We, uh, we, ha we have proved this and so uh, here applying uh, the coordinates of uh, P1 and P2. You know, you can uh, find the distance between P1 and P2 and that uh, that distance thus we get that square root of uh, P2 minus P1 square plus uh, Q2 minus Q1 square. Square root of P2 minus P1 square plus Q2 minus Q1 square is the length uh, between P1 and P2 and that length is greater than P1 uh, Q1 uh, prime uh, Q2 prime, the length between Q1 prime and Q2 prime. Now we have to s uh, say something, uh, some points about uh, the choice of epsilon. We have earlier in the beginning, uh, in the beginning portion, uh, part of uh, the theorem, uh, the proof of the theorem at the, uh, at the time of uh, at the time of uh, starting the theorem, uh, while uh, yeah, shrinking uh, the set, the given set, we we tr we we uh, we, uh, we try to shrink the given set uh, into a smaller set. Uh, you remember that we have mentioned uh, we have mentioned an epsilon uh, 
so that uh, the length of the shrinked uh, shrinked set uh, is one plus epsilon. At that uh, at that uh, point, uh, I have told you that uh, we will decide the value of epsilon based on some uh, some conditions. We will decide the value of epsilon. And this, this is now the time uh, uh, to decide that value. So how can we we can how can we select the value of epsilon on on the basis of what we select the value of epsilon? See. Uh, we compare the area of m double prime uh, you know the area of m double prime is four times that of one plus epsilon so the area of m double prime uh, m double prime uh, for uh, the which is that is four into one plus epsilon and the area of m for that for for choosing epsilon what we do we compare the area of m double prime and that of the uh, and, and the area of uh, m area of m is uh, is um, we know that area of m is given in the statement that uh, it is greater than 4 it's greater than 4 so uh, by after comparison we have to decide the value of epsilon such that uh, the area is just below the area of uh, um, area of m double prime is just below uh, the area uh, of m how do we decide? The area of uh, uh, m double prime, that is 4 into 1 plus epsilon is just, uh, uh, is less than, 4 into 1 plus epsilon is uh, just below the area of uh, m, or it is uh, smaller than, 4 into 1 plus epsilon is smaller than the area of m, and that's that way we decide epsilon. Okay, and this makes by this uh, uh, it is uh, it it's made sure that uh, the set m double prime, or if it is uh, translated back to it the uh, the original position of m, the if if the if the new expanded set m double prime, when it is uh, taken back to the uh, back to a position uh, having uh, origin as the center, when it is taken back to a position having origin as the center, and then you have a direct comparison with uh, at that position you have a direct comparison with the given set with the original set with the with 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 our given set is m with the set m you can have a direct comparison because uh, the center of uh, uh, the set m uh, is also the origin center of the set m is origin and now the new translated m double dash uh, m double prime also has the uh, same origin so uh, we have a direct comparison and when we have a direct comparison uh, the set uh, m double prime the translated m double prime must be must be inside completely it must be inside the uh, sorry uh, okay we have to refer that figure then then only we can say uh, the figure once again we want to go and then you can say uh, okay, the previous one. Okay, okay. and that's uh, M. Okay, uh, this M double prime must be must be um, must m it must which one? Uh, M double prime. This is translated. And this blue blue lined uh, set is uh, blue bound. Uh, uh, the the set having blue boundary, blue boundary, blue color color colored boundary is the translated M. Uh, uh, the uh, translated set uh, translated M double prime the set uh, translated m double prime here you can see the m uh, the set m double prime uh, the set m double prime uh, uh, that was uh, that uh, that is obtained by expanding m m prime the set uh, m double prime is obtained uh, ex by expanding m prime this set the inner set is expanded to obtain m double prime after that the whole thing is translated back to uh, the origin back to the origin uh, in order to have the origin as the center so it is translated back and now now uh, the new uh, new sets have origin as the center and after that you can see that uh, uh, you must get that m double prime is uh, uh, it must uh, must be completely enclosed uh, enclosed by uh, the set m the original set m m double prime or the translated m double prime the new set translated m double prime must be well inside the set m and this way you have to choose the value of epsilon so you can you can choose the value of epsilon uh, uh, such that uh, this condition uh, 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 takes place we, what is the condition the condition that uh, uh, the set the translated set m double prime is completely inside it lies inside the set m you know all these are symmetric sets uh, symmetric and so uh, 
and they that will uh, yeah, some part if, if some part is inside then the other part will also uh, come inside if some portion is inside then all the remaining portions must come inside and that way it will um, uh, it will it can happen only that way okay let's now uh, let's go back to uh, the point where we where we stopped okay and this is the selection of uh, uh, we were talking about the selection of epsilon okay we select epsilon in that way and then it is transferred back to its origin, original position having the origin as a center or symmetry and then the translator the translator m double prime must be well inside so this is the condition that must be satisfied when choosing epsilon uh, but you know if if the value of epsilon is uh, much uh, much higher chosen if it is chosen much uh, much big and then what happens and this m double prime translated m double double prime will cross the boundaries of uh, uh, m and it will be will be become uh, get bigger than bigger than m so that situation should be avoided the si that situation should be avoided while choosing uh, the value a value for epsilon okay then uh, coming to the end of the uh, proof uh, this is the last part of the proof uh, here we have one more figure and but uh, discussing coming to that uh, uh, before coming to that figure let's go back to the discussion the continuation of discussion since uh, in the figure 4 uh, which figure is for yes figure 4 okay now you can re uh, refer the figure 4 so but what is uh, given about what is the, uh, what is described here about uh, uh, the figure 4 it's uh, let's read that first and since in the figure 4 uh, line L is parallel to the line L is parallel to the line segment joining uh, the translated positions of uh, the lattice points p1 and p2 okay we have translated positions of uh, the, la the lattice points p1 and p2 uh, but uh, to uh, to know that uh, much better uh, let's go back to uh, the figure we have to go back to the figure once again and you know here we have p1 and p2 uh, p1 and p2 and then uh, its uh, corresponding points are p1 prime double prime and p1 and p2 double prime uh, okay and since uh, when uh, since we translate uh, m prime and m double prime together to uh, the origin uh, to the, to this position m prime and the m double prime uh, both are translated to M, prime and M double prime. These two sets are translated to the uh, to a new position to the new position having uh, origin as the center. You know the point P uh, P one P two will also be translated. The point P one the points in uh, in M prime. Uh, p1 and p2 are the two points in m prime two largest points in m prime and those two points will also be translated naturally translated to uh, translated to the uh, the translated set m prime they will also be translated to the translated set m prime this is the translated set m prime you can see the two uh, points uh, two, two new points translated points uh, yeah, the two two new uh, translated lattice points you can see but here um, is there any guarantee that they are lattice points no we cannot say that they are lattice points uh, at this moment you cannot say that they are lattice points but uh, when they were in this set in uh, here p1 m, uh, m prime when they were in m prime when they are in m prime they are lattice points but when the uh, when the corresponding points uh, uh, are considered here in uh, in the translated m prime uh, we cannot say that they are lattice points but we have some uh, some some uh, some uh, important uh, points about uh, we know some important points we can say some important points about uh, these uh, uh, this new points new translated points uh, because you know uh, the distance we can say some uh, uh, some important thing about uh, the distance between these uh, uh, the two points because when they were in uh, in m prime when these two points were in M prime, you know that uh, uh, the points P1 and P2, uh, coordinates of the points P1 and P2 are indices. As a result, we have uh, the difference, difference of the coordinate-wise difference uh, of the points. Uh, 
coordinate wise difference uh, of the points are integers clearly uh, I am uh, I am telling about the um, points P1 and P2 okay the coordinate wise difference about uh, difference of these points are uh, are integers the same thing will be uh, uh, will be true in the case of uh, the two new transfer points uh, about these two points also the same thing can be uh, can be said uh, it's because uh, it's because the points there is no uh, change in the uh, distance between the two points by the translation okay then what? Okay, then uh, we have the points of P1 and P2, new transfer points P1 and P2. Mm, then, uh, but also we can uh, see that this is the translated uh, line uh, L but that line passes through the origin uh, that is clear uh, that line passes through the origin uh, and so uh, the line passes through the origin and uh, uh, and also it is parallel to P1 the new uh, points P1 and P2 uh, that condition uh, will also uh, be there without affecting that condition we have the translation cannot affect that uh, that uh, the fact that uh, the, that the line is uh, parallel to uh, the line segment P1 and P2. So due to translation it is not affected. So in the new figure also P1 and P2, the line segment P1 and P2, P1 P2 is parallel to uh, the line L. But the line L is the, um, is the translated line of L dash. Uh, this is the new line which is obtained by the uh, by the translation of L dash. Okay. Then you know, th this is the origin, this is the point, um, uh, the point origin, this point is the origin. Okay, then what happens? And you can say, you can measure the, the distance, uh, the distance between P1 and P2 uh, can be measured. If you measure the distance between P1 and P2 and uh, if you uh, take that measurement along, uh, along the uh, line, along the line L, uh, if you take uh, if you take the measurement along the line L from the point uh, O from origin I mean from origin if you take that measurement uh, if you take the same measurement and uh, you can find you can obtain a point uh, which is uh, here given the label S yes. you can obtain a point S yes, uh, and that point you know uh, it, we are going to say that that point is inside uh, it must be inside the uh, inside the line set uh, sorry inside the set m uh, the translator m prime the uh, it, uh, the point the new point s yes, is uh, we, we can sh we can show that we can show that the new point s yes, uh, is well inside uh, the new set uh, m prime and that's the point that is the uh, last point that we want to show. So here in the figure, uh, okay, and so uh, since the figure four, uh, since in the figure four, the line L is parallel to uh, the line segment joining uh, the translated position. Okay, this is the repetition uh, in the figure. Referring to figure four, uh, we get that the line L is parallel to the line segment joining uh, the translated positions of uh, the lattice points P1 and P2, and also you know uh, the slope of uh, the line. Slope of the line uh, P1 P2 is Q2 minus Q1 divided by uh, P2 minus P1. The slope of the line segment P1 P2 is Q2 minus uh, Q1 divided by P2 minus uh, uh, P2 minus P1, and therefore we can uh, uh, we can write the equation uh, as the line as the line L is parallel to the line segment P1 P2. Uh, we can uh, write the equation of the line also, uh, assuming that x y is an arbitrary point on that line L. We uh, we get that uh, equation of the line is y is equal to the slope uh, slope of the uh, uh, line segment uh, P1 P2 L slope of the line segment P1 P2 the same slope you can take uh, as the slope of uh, the line L also so uh, y is equal to Q2 minus Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 into X 
Once again, we can uh, refer that figure. See, uh, we 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 know that this is uh, parallel to this line segment is parallel to uh, the line L, and the line L is uh, the translation uh, line of uh, uh, L L L prime. Okay, and uh, P1 and P2 are the translated points of uh, uh, point translated points uh, obtained from uh, obtained by translation of uh, the points of P1 and P2. So we call them translated P1 and P2. Okay, and we have obtained the uh, slope of the line segment P1 P2, and then uh, since these two lines are parallel, they have same slope. So using that slope, we can we have written uh, the equation of the line L. Okay, and that is the position. Where, and this is the position where we are standing now. Now we know the equation of the line, and applying that equation of the line, you know, uh, since uh, since uh, zero 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 zero, uh, that means origin is a point on the line. You know you can substitute. You can substitute what uh, for x you can substitute zero, and for y you can zero, uh, substitute zero. So zero zero, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's uh, the, uh, yeah that follows easily, no problem. Uh, but another thing that uh, you can find one more uh, point by substitution, but some one more uh, values of the coordinates uh, by substitution. Okay, clearly, uh, clearly, uh, origin is the is a point uh, uh, point on the line line L. So zero zero can be substituted. Okay, but another thing is important one that uh, we. Uh, we if we if we take x is equal to p2 minus p1 in this expression, if you take a p2 x assuming that x is equal to p2 minus p1, we are going to get that y is equal to q2 minus q1. Okay, when we take x equal to p2 minus p1, but p2 minus p1 is an integer. You know, p2 minus p1 is an integer. So assume that uh, if this quantity x is equal to p2 minus p1, then they cancels, they cancels and get that y and we get that y is equal to q2 minus q1. So, um, and q2 minus q1 is also, in addition to that, we can say that q2 minus q1 is also an integer. Thus, p2 minus p1 and q2 minus q1 both are integers. Thus, if we consider the point, a new point, uh, x uh, p2 minus uh, um, p2 minus p1 and y q2 minus q1. If we consider the point, that point is p2 minus p1 in bracket, comma q2 minus q1 uh, in bracket. It's a new point, and this point, since they have integer values, p2 minus p1 and q2 minus q1, from our earlier discussion, uh, uh, from the discussion in our earlier part, uh, uh, it is clear that p2 minus p1 and q2 minus q1 both are integers, and thus uh, the point, uh, uh, the point that we have obtained here. What is that point? The point is p2 minus p1 comma q2 minus q1. This point uh, uh, contains all the coordinates uh, integer values. That means it is a lattice point. It is a lattice point. Once again, you know, you know, you may note that this point is a, the newly obtained point is a lattice point. And also, since x and y values satisfy the equation, the equation of the line y is equal to uh, this is uh, these values are actually obtained by substitution by assuming that x has this value, then y, ha y has that corresponding value, and that way we have obtained the values of x and y. So it is clear that these two quantities x and y, these two x and y quantities. Uh, satisfy the equation uh, y equal to q2 minus q1 by p2 minus p1 into x. What does it mean? It means that the newly obtained point is a point on uh, the line L. It is a point on the line L. Now, uh, knowing uh, one more thing that if uh, or proving one more thing that uh, that new point uh, lies inside very well inside the uh, the translated set M prime, and we are done. Our uh, the major portion of the proof uh, will be then complete if we show the, uh, um, uh, that much. If we sh if we can show that if we can show that uh, the newly obtained point p2 minus that point is p2 minus p1 comma q2 minus q1. Uh, if that point lies inside uh, inside the new translated newly obtained translated uh, set uh, m prime, then major portion of the proof is complete. Then we can easily conclude that uh, uh, the proof. So for that, uh, for that, okay, we can uh, now use. Uh, we can we can uh, for this purpose we can use uh, a, a simple geometry. Uh, the length you can you can use the comparison of uh, uh, comparison of lengths. Okay, uh, here 
we uh, once again we want to go back to the previous figure one of the previous figures see uh, we have proved that we have proved that by comparison uh, we have proved that the length of uh, uh, see here uh, length uh, le the length of the uh, line segment p1 p2 is uh, is smaller than it is uh, it is less than and the length of uh, uh, length of q1 q2 q1 prime q2 prime length of length of this line segment is uh, less than and this is less than uh, as the figure also uh, uh, shows it but uh, you have to um, uh, you can you have to take the situation uh, in in a general way so you have to uh, describe the situation in a general way okay and since we have but we have proved that length of uh, uh, line of the line segment p1 p2 is less than uh, or equal to the length of uh, q1 uh, q2 but q1 and q2 q1 q2 uh, uh, it will also be translated the lines uh, the line segment q1 or the points q1 prime q2 prime will also be translated due to the translation of uh, uh, m m m prime uh, due to the translation of m prime to the point of symmetry as origin uh, um, to, the, to the to origin as the point of symmetry so to origin as the point of symmetry okay and then uh, all the points p1 p2 and uh, q1 prime q2 prime all are then uh, translated to the new position so once again uh, we want that figure coming to that figure no? No. and these are the points here here this point is this is the uh, new uh, position of uh, uh, q1 prime and q2 prime here you have q2 prime this is uh, assuming that this is q1 prime new position of q1 prime this is uh, the new position of q2 prime and you have the points new position of p1 and p2 here uh, but you know uh, we have obtained the uh, point and the point uh, okay okay we have obtained the point uh, yes here but it is uh, at the moment you cannot say that whether s is uh, inside that uh, uh, inside this smaller uh, set we cannot say it can be outside also yes can be outside also but you know uh, uh, but you can you can uh, say one thing that uh, the line uh, length of the line p1 p2 is equal to length of the line uh, um, length of the line segment s o see uh, yeah this is uh, uh, this comes from the choice of uh, this comes from the uh, from the choice of the values of p1 uh, p2 minus p1 and q2 minus q1 so uh, the values the values p2 minus p1 and q2 minus q1 and that are the coordinates of the uh, coordinates of the point yes clearly we have the coordinates of the point as, uh, as uh, p2 minus uh, p1 and q2 minus q1 so the length of uh, this line segment is uh, clearly uh, square root of p2 minus p1 and q2 minus q1 thus we get that we can calculate that uh, uh, length of the line segment okay so that's cal that's calculated here uh, the length of the uh, then we uh, we name the point okay and we name that point you can you can read it here uh, and this indicates that okay when x equal to 0 y equal to 0 we get and when x equal to p, p2 minus p1 uh, we get y equal to q2 minus q1 so okay then let's go through that uh, um, uh, the note the the lines of the note uh, or the lines of the proof of the st uh, um, step steps in the proof uh, here we can see that uh, um, p2 minus p1 uh, comma q2 minus q1 is a lattice point on the on the line l okay that was also described and uh, which which passes through the uh, that line l passes through the origin so uh, we name that point we name the point that newly obtained point p2 minus p1 comma q2 minus q1 uh, as uh, yes using the letter s uh, you can uh, see that in that figure and clearly now we, if you measure suppose we uh, measure the uh, distance between o and s uh, you can uh, you get that uh, it is square root of p2 minus p1 square plus uh, q2 minus q1 square but you uh, you, uh, you can remember that 
<coughs> now you can remember that we have calculated this quantity uh, earlier we have calculated calculated this quantity and this quantity was uh, less than uh, by comparison this this quantity was equal to uh, the distance between p1 and p2 we have shown that the distance between uh, the p1 and p2 in m prime in uh, which are the points largest points inside m prime uh, is equal to it was calculated equal to square root of p2 minus p1 square plus uh, q2 minus q1 square and the same quantity we have uh, we have obtained here also uh, as the distance between o and s and also we uh, we know that uh, this quantity is less than modulus of uh, uh, q1 prime uh, q2 prime modulus of all the distance between q1 prime and q2 prime what does it uh, what does it uh, say uh, it means that it means that uh, see the distance so this distance is equal to this distance distance between o and s and also uh, that distance is less than uh, less than uh, less than the distance uh, between uh, it is less than the distance between uh, the boundary points q1 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 prime this is the translated q2 q1 prime and this is translated point uh, q2 prime so distance between these two points uh, is distance between these two points the boundary points uh, is greater than the distance between these two points and also uh, the point uh, o is inside that is the center of symmetry of that set all these facts together say that uh, uh, say what it, it says that the point must be inside the point s yes, must be inside the uh, set uh, m prime the translated m prime or correctly the translated m prime or in the new position of uh, m prime hence we we uh, hence we get a point which is other than and also uh, since the coordinates of that point s are integers we can say that it is a lattice point so clearly we uh, clearly we uh, we have to say that uh, Yes, it's a lattice point. Yes, it's a lattice point which is not equal to the origin or other than origin. Thus, yes, it's a lattice point other than the origin, and it lies it lies in uh, the new position of uh, M prime, new position of the set M prime. Okay, and and that by that we can uh, conclude this uh, result uh, we can conclude the proof of the result uh, it's because uh, we have obtained that uh, point uh, other than that lattice point the required lattice point other than the origin but uh, you can think uh, you can um, little more uh, um, if you uh, further think a little then you can say you can see that uh, since the point s lies on the uh, since the point s lies on one side of uh, uh, on, on one side of the origin uh, that belong to a symmetric on one side of the origin uh, and also the point uh, the point s is inside a symmetric uh, set m prime symmetric set m prime then naturally uh, by extension of the uh, by extension of the line segment to the other side and by measuring uh, same distance uh, to in uh, in the other direction you can obtain one more point s dash here just below the origin um, just below that origin uh, along the same line uh, on the same line you can obtain one more point that point can also belong to uh, m dash m, m prime Thus, we have two different uh, two 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 points two points which are other than uh, the origin, which uh, actually belong uh, which which belong to which actually belong to the set M dash. So this is the end of the um, uh, end of the proof, and thus we have obtained the uh, result. Okay, thank you.